Just how deadly is the coronavirus? This is part one of two of my latest analysis that seeks to convert the unfolding coronavirus pandemic into a stock market trend forecast. A pandemic that increasingly looks likely to be the worst the world has faced since 1918 Spanish flu that killed an estimated 10% of the world's population. Thankfully, so far this virus looks set to kill less than one-tenth that of the Spanish flu at worst. Still extremely deadly, that the markets are not fully discounting the consequences of and that the virus could, muta could mutate into an even deadlier strain that is already done at least once to date, i.e. from S-type into L-type. Now, the whole of this analysis, including the stock market trend forecast, i.e. part 2, has first been made available to patrons who support my work. So, for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just $3 per month. So, just how deadly is the coronavirus? For the answer to that, we look to the case fatality rate across a number of infected countries with differing capabilities in the ability to test for the infection and then to compare against the conclusion of my analysis of 21st February that took into account serious underreporting in the numbers of infected in China, probably to a magnitude of at least times 7, that concluded in a probable coronavirus case fatality rate of 0.64%, which if accurate would make the COVID-19 about 15 times as deadly as the seasonal flu. So now, with several more weeks of infections data from a range of nations, the most important of which is South Korea, for which my analysis of 26 February concluded was likely to be the most accurate in terms of recording the numbers of infected and thus a good harbinger of what to expect to play out in the West during March and April. So the latest data of the total global reported cases of infections of 98,424 resolving in 3,386 deaths, which implies an horrific case fatality rate of 3.44%, which if true would translate into about 40 million deaths at the rate of 15% infected, i.e. in line with seasonal flu infection rate. However, this is heavily influenced by Chinese data, which my analysis of 21st February concluded to be inaccurate to a significant degree by not having tested many hundreds of thousands of infected Chinese people. Whilst outside of China, the case fatality rate soon drops to about 1.93%, which is still very high and would result in 22 million deaths if true. As for South Korea, i.e. the nation I deem to be the most accurate predictor of truly just how bad this virus actually is, well, their data now results to a case fatality rate of 0.64%, which is exactly the same as my conclusion of 21st February and which imply to expect 7.5 million deaths worldwide. So as things stand, it is highly probable that the case fatality rate for most Western nations can expect to experience is going to resolve to between 0.64% and 1%, with variations depending on the effectiveness of response in acting to contain and delay infections and the general quality of healthcare systems, and any mistakes made such as the incompetence of America's CDC by failing to send out working test kits during February that could now result in a higher US death toll than would otherwise have been the case. For the UK, 0.64% would convert into about 62,000 deaths, whilst for the US, about 365,000 deaths. So again, the CFR is highly dependent upon the effectiveness of response to virus outbreaks as Iran illustrates, which is likely to experience a far higher case fatality rate than 0.64%, where official figures currently resolve to a CFR of 3.07%, though the number of infected and deaths are likely to be several times higher than official data. 
we in the West are now at the very beginnings of this pandemic as the US has reported just 13 deaths against the UK's one death. So what are going to be the social and economic consequences if the pandemic runs its expected course and the number of deaths in the UK gets to anywhere near 62,000. As I imagine news reports of the number of deaths exceeding 100 would trigger much fear amongst the general population, let alone what 1,000 or 10,000 or 50,000 reported deaths would trigger. Already people are clearing UK shelves as hand sanitizers and toilet paper on the basis of barely 100 infected and just one death. And then we have the issue of evolution, where the virus already mutated back in January into two strains, the S-type and the L-type, where the older S-type is less deadly and infectious. Worse still, patients can be infected with both types. So let's hope that the Chinese have managed to suppress the L-type and that most of the cases outside of China are going to be the older S-type as of an as having had more time to spread than the L-type which prompted China to deploy extreme measures to prevent the spread of coronavirus infections outside of China analysis. The latest official infections data which despite a proper record of Africa and South Central America's numbers has the number of infected literally going parabolic soaring by nearly 3,000 overnight to 17,855 so well above my trend forecast that projects to an official tally of 129,250 infections outside of China by the end of March 2020. So were this trend to continue into the end of March, then the number of infected outside of China would total 290,000, which would not bode well for what was to come for April and May, whilst the number of deaths could be estimated to be at least 19,000 based on it case fatality rate of 0.64%, as per the conclusion of my analysis of 21st February as being the most probable outcome. UK coronavirus infected numbers are going parabolic update. The total number of infections recorded in the UK has now started to go parabolic, exceeding my trend trajectory for the first time due to increasing community spread that has finally prompted the government and NHS to start getting their act together and respond to the unfolding crisis. Though it has always been a case of reaction to events rather than taking proactive action, such as the fact that the UK should have suspended all flights from China at the end of January. Instead, they continue to let infected Chinese nationals into the UK who have gone on to spread viral particles. The UK also recorded its first death, that I forecast a total at least 90 by the end of March, with far worse to come in April and May, if the pandemic is not contained. US coronavirus infections are going parabolic update. My US trend forecast is for 13,000 infected by the end of March, resulting in about 180 deaths. Though the actual number may turn out to be significantly higher because I see little sign that the US is taking the coronavirus seriously enough, where many are still shrugging it off as being not that much worse than the flu, such as President Trump. Instead, it is at least 15 times as deadly as the flu and depending on the quality of response and healthcare, could be 100 times as deadly which is reflected by US deaths exceeding my trend forecast, i.e. 10 actual against 4 forecast. The bottom line is that most Western nations have been sat on their horses for the past 8 weeks and done little or nothing in the face of the coming coronavirus storm. Well, that storm has now arrived, which is sending the likes of the British and US government scrambling to play catch up. America's CDC panickingly ordering millions of tests that are due to start being delivered next week, something that should have been done at least a month ago. Whilst the UK has barely tested 15,000 people, a drop in the ocean that ensures that the pandemic is going to rage 
and as more people will be tested over the coming weeks then it will be found there are thousands of people already infected in the UK who will make their way into the statistics over the next few weeks still it could be worse as the US has tested less than 1,000 people at a time when they should have tested closer to 1 million something that China is now doing every six days which is down to the fact that many people are being typically charged three thousand dollars to get tested for coronavirus so even when showing symptoms many are not likely going to want to go and get themselves tested at a cost of three thousand dollars each once upon a time i thought that the west would handle the coronavirus crisis a lot better than china now I'm not so sure because the likes of the NHS in Britain and the CDC in America have been shown to lack competency which is compounded by America's healthcare system that puts dollars before trying to stop the spread of the virus which is a recipe for disaster. Stock market trend implications My stock market analysis and trend forecast based on my coronavirus analysis as of late January was first made available to patrons who support my work that basically warned to expect this decline on the 9th of February so plenty of advance warning and part two of this analysis that covers the stock market trend forecast into probably late April will be first made available to patrons who support my work so for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just three dollars per month and ensure you subscribe to this youtube channel for the next video in this coronavirus series and do take this short window of opportunity remaining to boost your immune systems towards normal by taking vitamins d c b3 and e your analyst hoping you survive the coronavirus pandemic of 2020